Hi guys, I think it's been such a long time since I've sat down in front of a camera and decided, right, today I'm gonna film something. But it's good to be back and I thought this week I'd do like a really chill video talking about some things that you as a less medical student might want to think about before you start your clinical years because I know that the third years are starting next Monday. If you are a third year or if you are in your clinical years or starting your clinical years, um, maybe this is a video for you to watch because you're a little bit lost about what to do on the ward and not feel like a stuck out sore thumb. That took me ages to try and figure that out. And we had three blocks, which was surgery, medicine and GP. And um, this is so variable between like every medical school. Like I know some of my friends who were in their first clinical year did obs and gynae and ENT, like it depends where you are. But this is what this is what Alessa does, so. I thought I'd go through five things, because five is a nice number. Five things that maybe you should think about um, if you're starting clinical years, and like, just like a few goals that you can set for yourself if you're like a little bit worried about how to balance going to placement and doing work and having a social life and relaxing and sleeping. Number one is do a little bit every day. And what I mean by do is do a tiny bit of work every day because there's a lot of content. I can't really quantify how much there is in medicine because it's like never ending. Um, but what you can do is figure out what you are learning for that week. So for example, when we were on our surgery block in Peterborough, I think, and we were set like a timetable where one week we were doing the hand and the elbow and the next week we were watching surgery to do the hip and knee. So if you know that that's we were learning for that week maybe do some reading around the anatomy the pathophysiology the clinical stuff um and some things to do with the surgeries and things like that so you have an idea of what you are learning whilst you are seeing that in clinical practice so that's my first tip just basically do a little bit every day even if it's like one hour that's all you need to do to kind of get started so you're not overwhelmed by like loads of conditions at the end of the block number two is basically have an aim for the day so this could be either like taking a blood sample or performing like a cannulation it could also be like taking a clinical history so you and your clinical partner could kind of split the history together and you'll learn this like at medical school I'm not going to teach you um but I'm just kind of giving you the advice or you could even practice the clinical examinations even at Leicester we have like workbooks that we get given so you can like fill that in and make sure you do that on your placement as well if you kind of just rock up to placement without really having a plan it's kind of a waste of time especially if you have to spend like half an hour or an hour traveling there and you don't really know what you want to do make sure you and your clinical partner or partners have an idea of what you want to get done and then you just feel satisfied that you've taken one blood sample and got it signed off by one of the f1s so it's a really good thing to have a plan Number three, I think, I don't know if I said the numbers, but number three is basically leech on to an F1 or an F2. If you're a foundation year doctor, you've basically just graduated from medical school. So you either do five or six years of medical school and then you do like two years of foundation training. They know what it's like to be a medical student and feel like you're a waste of space. They're the best people to kind of go and talk to because they know your pain and they know what it feels like to just feel like a little bit lost. So you can always ask them if there's any jobs to do, if there's any interesting patients that you can take a history History from and you can even use them to kind of present your cases and stuff so you get that confidence in terms of summarizing the patient's history and like maybe think of a few ideas for what investigations and management plans that you need to do but leech onto them because they're not scary some of them might not like you but that's okay sometimes the consultants are a bit like absent like they're not there or they're busy doing other things so just go for the junior doctors and I think you'll be fine. Number four is to get pass med. I think I've banged on about it before in one of my previous videos. I'll link it somewhere below. But with pass med, it just basically allows you to apply the content that you've learned in a question form and you can just test yourself basically. Once you've learned a, a fair bit of content within the first term, if you practice what you've learned, it does make your life easier like when you get to exams and stuff because you're not too worried about practicing questions. I don't think I have any more to say other than do pass med and I think there's Quesmed as well, but I haven't tried it and I think I'll be trying it this year. Number five is basically don't get too bogged down in like the details and the intricacies of what you're learning. Sometimes people get like a little bit confused about what they need to know in medicine because it can be quite overwhelming and daunting because there's just so much to learn. In essence, when you're in your clinical years, all you're training to be is an F1, F2 doctor. You need to know that knowledge. No one's expecting you to be a super specialized pediatrician or a surgeon 
for general surgery. That's not what you're training for. You're training to be a good, well-rounded doctor. If you are interested in those things, I'm not telling you to not read about it, but if you are worried about how far you need to go, it's like a skill that you learn um, about figuring out what is the limit that I need to know in order to pass the exam. And if there's extra details that you do have time to learn, then go ahead and learn it. And if you are worried about how much you need to know, like go back to your learning objectives, ask your friends, ask people in the year above, and I'm sure they're willing to help you as well. I feel like I went through that pretty quickly, but I, I thought I'd just do a quick summary of some things that I did to kind of like keep my head and float above the water throughout the third year and um, because sometimes it can get a bit overwhelming if you do have any questions about anything please like comment down below like comment share whatever it is i hate doing that spiel but i'm gonna do it anyway and if you want to look at how um i survived my preclinical years i'll insert the video again and stay tuned because i promised to myself that i'm gonna be more loyal to youtube and make more videos um and hopefully they'll be interesting for you guys as well